When I was a little girl, I wanted to be Ylitalon mummo, my grandma. Ylitalon mummo lived in a big old farmhouse called Ylitalo in Puolanka in eastern Finland. Puolanka is the global capital of pessimism. But Ylitalo mummo was the most kindest and caring person I have ever met. Ylitalo mummo took me with her to take care of the farm animals. We took buckets of warm milk for the baby cows. They were, came happily to greet us and sank their soft pink noses into the warm milk. That was the best thing ever. I was a typical girl. I enjoyed being with animals. I wanted to be kind and caring like my grandma was. So how did I become a professor in information technology? When we see a caring and kind child, like I used to be, we are likely to think that, oh, they would be a great teacher or nurse or maybe a vet. It's not very likely that we would think that, oh, how great IT professional this caring little human being would become. So what went wrong with me? My claim is that nothing went wrong. We need kind and caring people in IT. We IT professionals are the ones who design the digital future for all of us. We innovate and create ideas on how we take care of our healthcare system, how we consume media, how we do our everyday banking and shopping. So why is it that we don't think that kind and caring children would be amazing IT professionals? Partly because of stereotypes. However, I think that a major reason why we do not do that is that we know it would be hard for them. We know they would face difficulties. We know they would feel they do not fit in. Why would anyone waste their unique, amazing life and talent? in a field that would be hard for them. Throughout my career in academia and an industry, I have experienced how this field continues to be male dominant and not welcoming for all genders. Eurostat statistics show that just one out of 100 girls in Europe expected to be working in IT-related occupation. When I go to an IT conference, I'm often get greeted with a surprise. Oi, we have a woman here. Then when people hear that, that I come from Finland, they go, aha, like that would explain everything. Finland has this public image of being a very progressive country, a promised land of equality. However, numbers tell a different story. In Finland, we have actually one of the most segregated job markets in all of Europe. Only one in 10 works in gender balanced jobs. Information technology is one of the fields with striking lack of female participation. More than three out of four designing our digital future are men. Even Spain, a country with maybe one of the most masculine public images in Europe, outpaces Finland with a higher percentage of female professors in technology. Earlier in my career, I often felt I did not fit in. And in response, I tried hard to be like everyone else. 
I was dressing in black and I tried hard not to be emotional and sensitive at work. I figured that drawing attention to my gender would mark me as an outsider. I didn't do that well. Apparently I'm not very good at blending in. I was still always the different one. The default secretary. The one who was not invited to meet visitors and network. I started to think that if I become like everyone else, what happens to the positive sides of diversity? Dressing in black might make me look slimmer, but it's also very boring. I felt that I was just one more of the same, not bringing in anything new. I felt I wasn't using my superpowers of being different, being the real person I was. That is a problem, as research shows that a pressure to conform can lead to lack of authenticity and inability to realize one's full potential. That was exactly how I was feeling. Instead of making women to change and fit this box of IT, the only real solution is to change the IT profession. We don't need another social media campaign telling women to choose IT. We need to change the IT profession so that women would want to go there, they would stay and they would be able to contribute. Digitalization is everywhere and IT companies seem to be ruling the world. So why would we change something that seems to be working just fine? With kind and caring people involved, we can get a more kind and caring future. Without them, we get healthcare systems which hide healthcare professionals behind the computer screens instead of helping them to take care of the patients. We get social media which creates digital addicts instead of helping us to communicate and understand each other better. We build biases into our algorithms and do not even see that because of lack of diversity in the development teams. Diverse development teams not only create better products, they are also financially more profitable. Still, the technology the world uses today is created by a relatively homogeneous group of people. European Patent Office data shows that women patent owners are even more rare than women in tech positions. Now you might be thinking that this is a problem which will just go away and disappear if we just wait patiently. When the old generations will retire, the new ones will be more inclusive and things will fix themselves. World Economic Forum gender gap report says it will take 131 years for gender gaps to close. 131 years. Let's imagine together how the world was 131 years ago. Even Ylitalo Mummo was not born. We got our first electric street lights in Oulu 130 years ago. They were powered by a steam engine. Telephone and radio were new inventions 130 years ago. And who thinks the speed how fast our society will be changing will slow down? Not very likely. All this change will happen and women won't be able to contribute equally. So what can we do? There are two phases when the number of women in IT drops drastically. The first is when young adults choose their place to study 
and the second is when they move to job markets. I propose three actions to tackle these two phases. Make IT degree programs more attractive, make IT jobs more accessible, and be an ally. First, we can make IT degree programs a more attractive choice of study for young women. As a professor, I see that many IT degree programs are still designed and managed by all male panels. Then it's not very likely that they would address the dreams and desires of young women. We can involve women in degree program design and make sure their voice is heard in designing both the content and teaching. Having more female teaching staff has been shown to increase the feeling of fitting in for young women. Second, we can make IT jobs more accessible for women. Many women still find making a successful career difficult and the work environment sexist. When you go to a job interview and you see there are no women in leading positions, you get the message that making a successful career here is hard. We can promote women as role models and show young women they can make it. Include women in job interview panels, invite them to meet visitors and be visible outside of your organization. Third, we can all become active participants in making our own work workplace more inclusive. We can become aware of the sources of inequalities and commit taking action against them. The first step is to listen to people who are in the minority, who are different from you. That will make them feel seen and heard, and it will help you to understand the world from another perspective. When you are in a meeting and you see someone struggling to get their voice heard, you can support them by making space for them to be seen and heard. Ylitalon mummo is not here with us anymore. I carry her wedding ring in my necklace to remind me of her and that little girl who wanted to be just like her, kind and caring. We can all, parents, teachers, employers, colleagues, friends, we can embrace the value from diversity and make all kind and caring children feel they are exactly who we need to design our digital future.